Thanks for joining. Um, before we officially get started, I do want to share a giveaway that we're gonna have going on in the spirit of Anatomy of a Winning Pitch. Um, slide Dr. Lola, who will be walking through the Inferno Guard deck with you today, has offered to share one hour of her time um, to help with a PowerPoint project, a, a deck you've got work you've got going, or even just a problem slide that you have a few ideas you're trying to pull together. And she, you know, not to brag, but has helped this Inferno Guard team of, of the uh, Northwestern Venture Cat Startup Competition uh, win this year and helped the team with the previous year as well. So two consecutive wins for Slide Dr. Lola. That's how she got her name. And all you have to do is go to the Presentation Thinking Instagram, share any post, um, tag us and Inferno Guard USA and with the hashtag every slide counts, which is the the mission that we're trying to corner here. <laughs> so wanted to start out with that for sure. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to Anatomy of Winning Pitch. We are so glad that you took some time out of your day to join us. We've got the special guest, Kevin Katfar, Nandita Balaji, and designer Lola Lopez of Ghost Ranch uh, Communication. Um, many of you may be familiar with our work of uh, presentation thinking, but as a reminder, presentation thinking is deep dive down the rabbit hole of storytelling, presenting, and how to do both well at the same time. Mikey and I, founder at Ghost Ranch Communications, we host the Presentation Thinking Podcast, uh, where we release new episodes every Thursday. But beyond just recording ourselves chat about it, it is truly our mission to build a community of Prez thinkers, if you will, uh, that can help people collaborate, learn from each other, and just nerd out together. And so in our fight against death by PowerPoint, as we're all familiar with, we really do believe that every slide counts. And after Lola had worked with this Inferno Guard deck for the Northwestern uh, competition, which I'll let them introduce a little bit more later, we thought it would be really cool like to get an inside look of what went into this thing. Beyond just, you know, people love before and afters of slides, but the structure, the strategy, and how, you know, literally breaking down its anatomy. Hence the ER surgical puns, expect more. <laughs> um, Anatomy of a Winning Pitch really gives you that intimate look into decks that are truly inspiring. And Inferno Guard was an especially inspiring one because it's a startup that's developed a device that can detect and report on wildfires remotely early on. So if that sounds important, it's because it is. And the stakes were really high and you're about to see how they pulled it off. So. Without further ado, I will pass the mic to Lola and the screen share, who will take on the story from here. Take it away. All right, I was on mute. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you for that amazing introduction, Molly. And yes, as you mentioned, my name is Lola. And I'm part of a group called Ghost Ranch Communications. You might have heard or be familiar with our work. And we are a presentation design specialist. You can think of us as your advertising agency that is really into PowerPoint. And here we are, Kevin and Andita. Guys, can you please tell us in your own words, what is Inferno Guard and where do we guys meet? Definitely. So my name is Kevin and that's my co-founder, Nandita. We've been working on a startup called Inferno Guard for over five years to provide an end-to-end -end wildfire monitoring solution for large-scale landowners. So we try to create a solution where we can help before wildfire season, during wildfire season, and after, primarily through a hardware device that we're creating that provides that monitoring. Um, but we met at um, the Northwestern Venture Cat competition. It is the uh, seventh largest competition entrepreneurial competition in the country, um, which gives away $160,000 to the winner. And when my team made it to the semifinals, we met Lola because she was our graphic designer um, for the presentation, which we were extremely thankful for um, wow. and helped us throughout the entire competition. Oh my God, thank you so much. Yes, we met up there. And then we go to the vision, the vision and the goal. So here's how most of us look like. It's just an internal nonstop chase. And for the Inferno Guards case, it was a contest consisting of, as he mentioned, approximately 3,000 
thousand dollars worth of money pot price. And I think we can all agree this is major motivation to enter and participate on the venture cap <laughs> content. Uh, yeah, but where should you start? And if this is you and you have an idea where to start, well, let me tell you, the truth is a lot of people can relate to that feeling. It's hard to figure it out your once upon a time, again, where to start, and a couple with such a high stakes can be really stressful. Mm -hmm. but no worries. We have yourselves here the same question that you guys, like what is the anatomy of the winning bitch? So from our personal experience, that comes from number one, understanding your audience, number two, clarifying the message, and number three, making the design work for you. All right, so let's get started with our number one, which is understanding your audience. So what do we mean by understanding your audience? Well, your audience will dictate what you should focus on. Let's get for an example. These are like example questions that you can ask yourself. So the demographics can determine um, with location, for example, where is it? So we know for this case in particular, it was at Northwestern University. And this is an event. So you can also ask yourself, when does it take place? Because maybe there's a select group that is available during those times that is important to know. And who is going to be there and who is judging are important questions. Last but not least, how is going to be judged? So that will get you closer to know who is your audience. And now that brings us to the judging criteria. So for this case in, partic in particular, the, you can go to the Northwestern website and you can apply and they will tell you exactly what they're looking for. They said it right there, the problem, proposition, progress, and the people. And they explain exactly why they're looking for and this creates a start and a structure. And so the journey begins. Am I right in front of our team? <laughs> Definitely. So when we started, there were kind of a lot of roller coaster journeys that we went through, specifically within the application cycle. So first, you know, it was about applying, making sure that we had the right submission materials, waiting to hear back while continuing to work on all of our, our work for Inferno Guard, um, getting into the semifinals, meeting with Lola, trying to figure out what the pitch deck looks like, finalizing it all, submitting it, going to the competition and pitching. So long journey to get to, I guess, where, where we were at the end of the competition, but fortunate that Lola was there for all of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And always keep it in mind, you know, the promised land, which I always love. <laughs> so moving on, I think one of the things that we wanted to consider throughout this were the specific challenges and constraints that we had. So these were more perspective from Nandita and I, um, and also restraints from the competition, but we really wanted the design to be clean and minimalistic because we're working on a pretty technical plot product and we wanted to make sure that it was um, easy for readers and viewers to consume. We had a 20 um, slide count, which was a little bit tough for us. We walked in with a lot more than that. Um, third, there was also a lot of technical and scientific work that we wanted to implement. And we had a time limit of seven minutes, which goes by really quickly if you have a lot to say. Yeah, that's correct. I want you to remember that. So when it comes to those seven minutes, what should your audience remember, right? Um, something about science, you know, complicated number, charge, it doesn't seem as memorable. Sure, numbers and charge can help a lot, but if you want to take one note, it should be attached to a feeling that is a relatable story. And for us at Inferno Guard, I think it's really important to explain the technology and the science, but all of the work that we do really is centered around the people that we work with and the lives that have been impacted through these wildfires and trying to create a way in which we're able to support those landowners, those families, those citizens as much as possible. So we want to lead with that and the mission above anything else. Perfect. So I'll open to my next point, which is clarifying the message when it comes to the anatomy of a winning peach. All right. So where you should start? The big question. It definitely would be great to answer, you know, 
this list of, of questions that you have here in order to share to your target audience. And these are great questions, but sometimes it can be hard to fit all of them in a single deck and they tend to lose the impact. So this is what we started with and they have answered a lot of those questions, even though they're important. We end up with a very linear list that we previously check and you check those one by one and the grace lines, but uh, yeah, becoming monotone and just finding out facts that no one can relate to, it just turns in an informational flatline. Mm -hmm. And we aiming for a story to bring us back to life. So we agree that checking in boxes isn't enough. Let's talk about a story. All right, we need to understand what the big picture is. So let's talk about the shape of the narrative. Many artists, including Kurt Vonnegut, have attempted to give shape to all story structures. Pinpointing the ups and downs of your pitch can help you narrate a story and keep an audience captivated. So let's take a step back and let's see what we can focus for a minute. So we have the chart here. So everything that's on the top is a positive connotation and everything's on the bottom is just a series of unfortunate events or negatives. So we have here our main character. I pick a happy little tree here. And uh, this is representing the woods or the forest for this case scenario. And I wanna place it in my story right on the top because I feel like nature was thriving and was, you know, everything was going great. But a few might notice through the years, there's a pattern that it has been increasing wildfires and was, was once flourishing, now it's burning. And Kevin can explain deeper cause why this is happening. You can call it human population or maybe global warming or maybe two men and gender reveal parties. But the truth is, um, yeah, wildfires are happening, guys. And right here at the bottom is what Kevin started narrating the story. The particular feeling of loss, it resonates with a lot of people and puts us on high alert. We see a fire and we have a feeling of hopelessness. And sure, a fireman can turn it off, but most of my fire, wildfire are contained after seven days and if you feel like this is not okay, it's because this is the current solution right now. So it doesn't feel like we're winning, right? Uh, the curves continue to be in the negative connotation. Um, Kevin continue explaining why this is impact our ecosystems, our park, and beyond that, I would like to add the money does go on trees because Kevin go ahead and adds how this impacts the global market and the US market. But all of a sudden, here comes the solution, which is Inferno Garden. And it curves the narrative to a promised land where it paints a good picture of what it could look like. But even better, Kevin can prove it. And Nandita. <laughs> and yeah. All right, so we go back again. And if this feels a little bit overwhelming, is because we have more than enough slides. Actually, there's eight extra slides that shouldn't be here. And this was part of the challenge. So we have to make the message more concise and we probably have to go through a process of elimination and probably submerging. So it goes back to my third point, which making the design work for you. Okay, so let's get started. So making the design work for you means that your target audience and your message are in sync with your graphics. For example, um, when Kevin is starting the presentation and he's narrating, this is the promise slide. And it goes and say that the subject, Corey, wakes up the day and it's just full on chaos, is fire everywhere. But if we see the image, and I see Corey smile, I'm not connecting that message. So it's okay to add a little more drama to make sure that your point is understandable. Kevin, can you show us how does it turn out? Yeah, for sure. So the way that I talk about this is I say, first, I'd like to introduce you to, 
introduce you to Corey Bingaman, longtime forester at Collins Co. Lumber, who woke up last August to thick, harmful smoke and flames engulfing his property. In a matter of hours, Corey watched his livelihood burn to the ground because of one uncontained fire. All right. So I call this drama, guys. Okay, so, and my other advice would be to give your audience time. So when you have more than one concept or maybe more than one idea into one slide, it would be great to use tools like animation to create a pause between information so it's easiest for your audience to digest. The Inferno team can show us how this works on the next slide. So in this slide, our goal ultimately was to drive home the massive gap in detection time. So most wildfires can take up to seven days until detection, but Inferno Guard solution can detect these fires immediately. And with this time difference, we're able to emphasize the massive gap in detection and increase the value of what we're able to provide to the landowners who need it. Excellent. Thank you, Nandita. All right, so here we have the before. And when we mention television story, um, I'm gonna rely on a saying that you might heard of, a picture is worth than a thousand words. So when we talk about preserving nature and avoid catastrophe, why don't we showcase the promise sign? This is the afters, as you can see in the slides, we're just taking advantage of beautiful nature pictures. And um, for example, this slide talks about conversations with landlords and how they get notified. So why don't we showcase a picture of a human touch so it can be more relatable to the current situation that they're going through. And right here, we have a quote from the National Park staff. And in this case, I think it's perfect to showcase the National Park. And as a reminder of the audience of what we're putting at risk, if we don't take action. And this is a three-step solution, and it's represented by an up-close forest um, tree in the forest, because we're going to zoom in into each one of those steps. And again, a great reminder of how to take care of Mother Nature. And this is a device and uh, with the app that is saving nature. So again, let's take advantage and showcase nature. And a recommendation if you're not a photographer, pretty much don't have the time for it. There is great stock images websites that you can find this, like Shutterstock, Getty Images, Adobe Stock, et cetera. All right, so we continue. Is possible simplify. Usually we mention to our clients, like slides are free. You don't have to put everything into one slide. But for this particular challenge, our slides were not free, so we needed to merge and simplify. And here's Inferno Team showing us the aftermath. So as you guys can see, the earlier slide was an overview of our market with a ton of numbers, a ton of information, and it was honestly hard to read. And what we were trying to do is simplify it into a streamlined, easy to read and digestible format that provides people with the information that they need in an easy to look at and understandable way. And so that's what we tried to do with the slide and that's what we tried to build into our entire deck. Thank you, Nandita. Okay. Yeah, so this was our original deck and we had more than 20 slides, it was too long for the requirements of the competition and for what we wanted to deliver. And we had no clue how to trim it down. We felt like our story was jumbled. Our slides had a lot of information and a lot of things that we were trying to communicate and we wanted to do it in the most streamlined way. But in this early version, it wasn't delivering what we wanted it to do. So through our journey, through the entire Venture Cat competition and working with Lola, we were able to develop a deck and a newer version that was trimmed down, streamlined, and easy to read. And so this is what we made. We were able to shorten our deck as well as put in a streamlined structure that really tells the story of Inferno Guard in a way that resonates with the listeners as well as communicates what we're able to do and provide to the landowners. So 
Our story begins by introducing Corey Bingaman. And so first, by introducing this problem and a specific person who's experiencing it, we're able to then adjust to telling more about how Inferno Bird Solutions specifically could have helped him. And so moving on from the problem, then we're able to go through our competition, our simple three-step solution, the technology that we use to deliver that, as well as our market and our next steps and what's next for Inferno Guard in the road ahead. Excellent. So from a designer, check this, just wanted to add so you guys can see here. Um, it's all about consistency. So brand, a good brand is just based on consistency. And to tie it all together, is better to maybe use a keyword. I'm just gonna share an example with this case. So we're working to incorporate a very modern minimalistic look. How you might say, we're represented through colors, through a lots of space, white space, a beautiful photography, and just keeping the text exactly what they need to say to just clarify the message. So the modern sign was not only what our client desired, but it also aligns with the brand. Uh, so you might ask. Well, the Inferno team mentioned there's a new solution. It hasn't been used before. Therefore, there's no current solution in the market. I feel it's a statement to mention that you guys are witnessing history. And what does the story shape look like for Inferno Guard? Yeah, same concept as explained before. Everything above the line is a positive connotation and everything below it is um, not so great. So as we know, this is where Kevin started. Um, and it, yeah, the team talks about the problem immediately, an unfortunate event while flying. So then it goes and follows to still a problem side, but also offering a solution. And, and in a neutral light, we place how they currently are handling the situation. And then we go up to the three-step solution. It goes down to 100 million laws. I would say that it's not so fortunate. And it goes up to the opportunity market and how they will implement those steps into the end up into Inferno Guard, which is the hero of a story. And I would say that this is what the ship looks like. And if you ask me, well, it has a heartbeat and it's alive. So ladies and gentlemen, if you ask the doctor how the surgery go, well, let's, let's hear from our patients. So the outcome was really successful. We had to pitch three times in the finals in order to um, you know, compete. But in the end, we won the $160,000 Venture Cat Grand Prize, which was really rewarding because we pitched across all levels of the university. So undergraduates, graduates, PhD students, MBAs, um, all, all types of, of um, students. And despite us being an undergraduate team, uh, we were able to take home the big prize. So I um, was really fortunate enough for that and excited to continue working on everything as well. Oh, that's amazing. And Dosaran continues to be on the top three finalists since we started three years ago. And during that time, we have won first place. Um, two years back to back. Therefore, when they celebrate, we celebrate too. So thank you. Woo, yeah, we're so, so proud of you guys. And obviously as going through this pitch, you can see that you know Inferno Guard is such an amazing and truly revolutionary device that can hopefully have a huge impact for forests and detecting wildfires. So. Um, yeah, awesome that you got some more awareness and got to take home the big check. <laughs> if you guys want to hear more about um, the Inferno Guard story, we did have Kevin on our Presentation Thinking podcast, which was such a blast. And so you can check that out. Um, I'll link uh, the episode in the uh, when I send out the recording and everything. But at this time, we'd like to open it up for some Q&A. Um, I see that Jeff has thrown one in the box, but if you haven't asked one um, and you've got some burning questions or comments, please throw them in there. Um, but we'll start with this one because I think this is really important and this is something we talk a lot about at Presentation Thinking. And 
Lola, I think this is kind of directed to you and yes. I'd love for Nandita and Kevin, your input as well, because you're entrepreneurs and you are pitching to a lot of different people. So Jeff's question is, what if your audience is different per pitch? How should the story change and shift? You know, like you got to pitch a lot of different people. And so where are those like alternate slides or how do you kind of handle that? So if you have the same pitch, but during that week, you want to present it to different people, right? Let's just say an example. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think with Kevin Case, um, we did, you know, the 20 slides that he was going to present. But I remember Kevin asking for an extra slide for people that wanted like more detail into what goes into the app or how it functions. So it's always good to have like those hand, like those extra slide for determine groups because I always feel like it's good to you know customize every time you talk to a certain group I think it's more effective definitely and and adding on to that I can only share my specific examples and stories but when I'm pitching to like a venture capitalist I want to highlight the revenue opportunity or the ways that we're structuring our sales but if I'm talking to another student I maybe want to dumb down the technological focus a little bit and share more about the story um, and if I'm pitching to different types of judges, I want to kind of support their priorities. Um, so better understanding exactly who you're pitching to and just trying to make slight changes into the pitch. I don't think that you have to, you know, redo the entire deck or change three to four slides, but it might be helpful to throw in some additional numbers on a slide or, you know, delete some context for some other slides as well. Um, but I don't think there needs to be a large shift necessarily. Right. I can see that like for the people that are in it and kind of might be familiar with your industry, you might need less context and, you know, um, information to set them up with. Whereas with other folks, it might just truly be telling the story and like conveying that human impact. So having some alternating things would be helpful. Um, I we've got another one here in the chat. Um, they say this is incredible. This is anonymous person. Uh, when will the inferno? When will Inferno Guard hit the market? Do you guys want to talk a little bit about where the device is at right now? Sure, I can start, Nandy. To feel free to jump in wherever if you find helpful. But we have a three-step solution for detection. The first step is a wildfire risk assessment that helps landowners identify high-risk areas on their property, and that is set to launch in three weeks, which we are really excited about. Um, so. Ooh. For landowners that are looking to better understand their property during um, and or after wildfire season, um, we provide an assessment down to the 10th of an acre for that. Um, so it's very data driven um, using machine learning. And then our second and third steps are still under development. So that's the physical hardware device that we are producing to provide wildfire detection and notification and the mobile platform um, that is happening in development as well. We have a paid pilot coming up um, with the timber company um, at the middle to end of the year, which we're really excited about, um, but testing will likely continue through 2023, um, but would love for anyone to be a beta partner for us as well, if interested. Yeah, please, you heard it here. And this goes without saying, but we'll obviously uh, link all things in Guard in our uh, follow-up uh, with the recording of this webinar and that you guys have got a pretty awesome newsletter that you send every other week or so. And so I'd highly encourage folks to sign up for the Inferno Guard newsletter to keep in the loop. Um, you've got a question from Maurice, uh, DMing me directly. And she was asking, this is for the Inferno Guard team. And what's, is there one thing you felt during your pitch at uh, the Venture Cat competition that you felt the audience really like resonated and reacted uh, well with? Nandita, do you wanna take that? Yeah, for sure. I think at least in my, like to me, one of the parts of our pitch that resonates the most is introducing Corey and really opening with that and kind of telling Corey's story and opening with Corey's story really resonates with a lot of people because, you know, it's real. Like Corey's land was destroyed in a wildfire and he didn't know how to recover. And I think bringing Inferno Guard solution in there really shows that this is a massive problem that's hurting millions of people on a daily basis and there's no widespread solution. And so that kind of just highlights what Inferno Guard is able to provide, but also just resonates with people when they hear Corey's story and the millions of stories that other landowners experience as well. Yeah, it's that emotional piece, right? 
Um, I have a question that we have talked about a lot. Um, and like Lola, you are the slide doctor, as we've said, and are you know a designer as your as your background. And so for someone watching this and pres presentation thinking in general, if you're not a designer and you're feeling a bit intimidated by you know you've got all your ideas and how do you form them on a deck in a visually compelling way, um, where do you start? I know you shared some awesome um, free right. slide imagery, free imagery sites, um, but how do you kind of get past that? Um, feeling of like, you don't have to be a designer to make a really visually compelling deck. I think I would say um, brand is consistency and consistency is brand. So what I say with that is if you pick a palette color, you can stick to that one. So the message is all across unifies the way you're trying to say. And like I say, if imagery, like image or maybe icons help you do, you know, come across your points, you can find it on on internet. You know, there's websites like Shutterstock or Adobe Stock or Getty Images that can help you like, you know, bring to, to life the designs. Yeah, yeah. And how did you guys like, you know, someone as well watching this, I know when we showed the before and afters, you guys already have a, had a fully fleshed out deck, right? And so some people might not even be to that point. It might be fully templated PowerPoint situation. So where, you know, how did you yourselves kind of get to that point? Yeah, really good question. So we had pitched probably 10 or 12 times in pitch competitions before we even saw Lola. And the drastic difference that she helped us with was incredible. But when we were getting started, I think it was really a matter of figuring out what you wanted to say initially in the deck. I think the hardest part for Nandita and I was how to structure what we wanted to say and in what order. So it was a matter of really, okay, well, here's the problem. We know that right here, stat, stats around it. We want to talk about the solution. At some point we want to talk about, you know, our ask and how much money um, we're able to win from these competitions, but we didn't know what order to put that in because everyone has a different perspective of how to structure um, the solution or how to structure the mm -hmm. pitch. And I think the thing we realize is that it has to be customizable to you know, you and, and your um, your vision and your mission as well. So we definitely leaned on mentors and, and people in our network to give us some feedback. But ultimately, in the end, you can, it's possible to get too much feedback. So we kind of just hunkered down and decided what was best for us and kind of barreled through with that. Um, and it seemed to be working pretty well and definitely worked well after Lola helped us as well. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a lot of what we talked about today was right the that story and placing thing where does where does that you know piece of information fall in the story to make it as as effective as it is because you guys came with some they aren't ugly slides right you know so it's it's something that isn't just like a uh, traditional before and after right you're, you're already in that um i want to ask um kevin we've talked about this on the podcast but if someone's looking for information on where to find pitch competitions and where to enter them. Um, where, do, where do they start? Because that's something they might not even know if you're not connected to the Northwestern Venture Cat as you before. Definitely. So there's a lot of pitch competitions for many different ages, many different demographics and regions. Um, there really are an incredible wealth of opportunities. I specifically have my most knowledge within the college pitch competitions, and that's really looking at every college and finding their pitch competitions and what's available. Um, and if you're kind of allowed to pitch, even though you're from a different school, but the city or town in which you might live in or, or cities nearby is a really good opportunity, especially being in Chicago. Um, for me, there's constantly, you know, communities of entrepreneurs that are hosting pitch competitions or um, certain locations, entrepreneurial locations in the city that are trying to host events and, and competitions as well to kind of bring the community together. And I think that's something more common that we've seen in the past few years that maybe hasn't been seen in the past. So I would encourage everyone to look at, you know, the, the cities nearby and, and how you can engage with the entrepreneurial community there because you'll be able to find a lot of information really quickly. Um, but there also are just some really large, like global or, or US recognized competitions that um, honestly, if you should search up, you know, global pitch competitions or national pitch competitions, they'll come up. Um, so there's kind of varying levels of, of offerings for what you might be interested in, you know, from the beginning to being a large, you know, capital company that has already raised money. So there's, there's lots of offerings out there. It's just a matter of trying to get engaged in the communities that 
might, you know, allow for you to find those. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to say that presentation thinking, you know, we've talked with a lot of different founders. And so we want to start developing a list for the uh, pen, uh, resource for folks to kind of start that search. So you're not just Googling, even though that obviously can produce some <laughs> really great results too. So um, we're glad you guys found each other and connected because, yeah, this is such a great deck to learn from and get inspired by. And yeah, glad it worked for you. So amazingly, we are right on time, which is awesome. And so I'm going to wrap the Q&A here unless anyone has any other burning questions pop out. Um, but Lola, if you want to move on to the next um, slide, I just want to, again, remind everyone, especially if you were here and inspired today by Lola, the slide doctor. Um, yeah, a free hour of her time. Go hang out with her. She's got such good insight into it really gets to the heart of your story, as you saw, and can flesh out those <laughs> those problem slides and make those animations and builds so that you can work within any yeah, creative constraints, as Mike pointed out in the, ch in the chat earlier. It's so important to work with what you what you have and not you don't this doesn't have to be um, you don't have to be the world class designer to access uh, these these types of decks. So let's let's get your pain points addressed and uh, yeah, check out presentation thinking Instagram, share a post, tag us and we'll we'll announce the winner by Friday. So um, we'll be looking for those DMs and on Instagram. And um, yeah, just to say um, this is you know a series this could be you if you have a deck that you've been working on that you feel um would love to be break broken down at anatomy of a winning pitch like presentation thinking is all about the nitty-gritty the devil in the details we want this to be a collaborative space so please reach out to us at any time we'd love to have your deck your story uh featured on presentation thinking anatomy of a winning pitch and we're going to tell you where to find us right now. <laughs> um, so my email is molly at ghostranch.com. Please email me anything you like, even if it's just things you find inspirational about presenting, storytelling, etc. cetera. Uh, if you go to presentationthinking.com, you can sign up for our own newsletter and you can find us on Instagram at presentation thinking and on Twitter at prez with a Z thinking as well. Inferno Guard is Inferno Guard USA at all their, <laughs> all their handles and they're well worth a follow for sure. So thank you again for joining everyone. We really just like feel so honored to have a, a bit of your time to shit, like to nerd out together. And it's, it's always a fun time to learn and a space to, um, yeah, break it all down. So enjoy the rest of your day and we will definitely be getting this recording in the next few days. We'll let ER music play us out.